I'm Caroline Atwood. I'm an athlete on the U.S. Sailing Team Knacker Squad. And I'm Ian McDermott, and I race 49ers for the U.S. Sailing Team. Thanks for joining us for another installment of U.S. Sailing's REACH curriculum. Today we're going to be exploring Module 3, Sail Shape and Perimeter. If you're a youth sailor or a student following along at home, come follow us and then check out the activity at the end. And if you're a program director, take note of how you can use this information in your own program once we're all back on the water. And for some solid background information, check out the REACH video with some sweet information and some steezy computer graphics. My name is Trevor Long. I'm a senior at MIT studying aerospace engineering. Engineering was sort of a byproduct of me sailing. So I started sailing when I was t uh, 10 or 12. And as I was sailing, it was, there was a lot of questions I started asking about things in general. And the more questions I asked, the more I realized I liked working on problems. So it was through sailing that it got me interested in the way things work and the way things work is engineering, so I just sort of ended up taking a step-by-step, -step, you know, from sailing to problem-solving to engineering. You know, the people I know through sailing and the friends I've made in sailing, that's, that's been really awesome. The ability to do things that were interesting to me, like working with U.S. Sailing or working with the Olympic team, were only really possible because I was involved with the sailing team. In Module 3, students learn how to calculate sail area and perimeter and understand how the shape of your sail can maximize performance on the water. While sails don't have their power written on them like motors, the power in your sail is dependent on sail shape and sail area being used by the wind. The shape of the sail or sail trim can also be adjusted for performance in various conditions using sail controls, such as the downhaul, outhaul, and main sheet. These skills are applicable throughout a sailor's lifetime, whether learning the ropes and just starting out at a community sailing center or pursuing a marine industry career in engineering and computer modeling. The model we're looking at today is based on the NACR 17, a foiling catamaran used in the Olympics. On the top half of the screen, we see a 3D image of the boat sailing upwind. And on the bottom half of the screen, we see a 2D cross-section of the sail as viewed from the top of the mast. When you're sailing, you have three main controls that you can use to adjust the shape of the sail. Those controls are the main sheet, the downhaul, and the outhaul. You can pull each of these controls in or out to help you make the boat sail more effectively upwind and sail faster. The downhaul controls how flat or full the top section of the sail is. When we pull the downhaul on, we flatten the sail. A flatter sail will help the boat depower in heavier wind. When we, when we let the downhaul off, we allow the sail to get fuller. A fuller sail will help the boat power up in lighter wind. While the downhaul controls the, how full or flat the top half of the sail is, the outhaul controls how full or flat the bottom half of the sail is. When we ease the outhaul, we allow the bottom half of the sail to be fuller. This increases the amount of power the boat has to drive through the water. An eased outhaul will be useful for days when the water is rough. When we pull the downhaul on, we flatten out the top half of the sail. A flat sail is helpful in windy conditions to help control the heel of the boat. When we pull the downhaul on, we flatten out the top half of the sail. A flat sail is helpful in windy conditions to help control the heel of the boat. When we tighten the outhaul, we make the bottom half of the sail flatter. A tighter outhaul is useful for days when the water is flat and you do not need as much power to sail upwind. My name is Helena Scott. I sail the NACRA 17 as a crew and I also competed in the Rio 2016 Olympics as a crew in the 49er FX. Well, I remember my first sailing camp. It was at Sail Sam Point, which is a nonprofit community sailing center um, near Seattle. There are a lot of other reasons why I pursued engineering besides sailing, but I was also enticed because of the sailing is, is ultimately you're using physics to move around. <laughs> um, and I 
that's cool. And I also, with all the systems on the boat, you learn to think, think that way and, and kind of how things work and kind of make it better. So I enjoyed that. My master's degree was in mechatronics, which is basically sensors and, and robotics. And that's the kind of stuff that the America's Cup boats use in vast quantities. So you can take it from just the intuition level all the way up to like, this is the top end of sailing, the cutting edge, how do these systems work? And um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy connecting the two and it enriches both sides for me. Yeah, I mean, if you're interested in STEM, sailing is a wonderful activity to both build your STEM intuition and, and see examples of these principles that you're learning about in action and it's also just so fun. Whether you're an avid sailor or just getting started, learning skills in science, technology, engineering and math can lead to a lifelong career on or off the water. Module 3 deals with sails. Today we'll be looking at how to manipulate sail shapes. Whenever you put a sail up, you have three options. You can leave it the same, make it deeper, or make it flatter. We'll be specifically looking at the toy honor and some of the tools at your disposal on this boat. The first tool is the main sheet. The next tool is the outhaul. Third tool is the Cunningham. The fourth tool is the Vang. All these controls work and are effective because of how they influence the mast, the boom, and the sail. The sails stretch due to these controls, and the masts and booms bend. The Cunningham attaches to the bottom of the, at the bottom of the sail. As you pull it on, it flattens the front of the sail and also bends the top of the mast. The Vang has many different types of purchase systems, but on the Toyaner is a lever here. As you pull the Vang on, you are effectively ramming this lever into the rig, which bends the rig and makes the sail flat. The outhaul does not affect any sort of bend, but only the depth in the bottom of the sail. As you pull the outhaul on, you make the sail cover more area on the boom, and thus making it flatter. The final tool we have here is the main sheet, which is by far the most dynamic. The main sheet not only changes the angle that the sail is trimmed to, but on certain boats with bendy rigs can also bend the mast. Some controls, like the main sheet, vang, and outhaul, are constantly being adjusted as we're sailing. But there are other controls that also adjust the mast bend and therefore sail shape, which are only able to be adjusted while the boat is still. We call these fixed controls. One of the most important fixed controls on the 29er is the shroud tension. The shroud tension works by adjusting how tight or loose the shroud is. The shroud connects halfway up the mast to the hull of the boat. When you tighten your shrouds, you are creating compression in your mast, which effectively pushes the section of mast under the shroud connection point forward. This flattens the mast and flattens the sail as well. Another tool to adjust your mast shape is the forestay. <clears throat> 29ers have an adjustable forestay, and just like a shroud, a tighter forestay will lead to a flatter sail. Other boats might also have a backstay, which just like the forestay and the shroud, flattens the sail the tighter it is pulled on. A final fixed control to consider are the battens, which adjust how much tension is forced into the sail when they're tightened. One of the toughest things as a sailor is to figure out the combination between the conditions you're sailing in, the controls at your disposal, and the boat you're sailing in. The best way to combat this is to understand the basic theory behind most of the controls. This is the first step in solving the speed puzzle. In my boat, for example, the Nacra 17, we don't even have a vang, so we rely a lot more on the Cunningham and the main sheet in order to bend the rig and impact our sail shape. 
and on my boat, the 49er, the rig is super tall. Fortunately, I was given three sets of shrouds to have full control over my mast. This allows me to get the sail shape exactly how I want it, and I spend a lot of my day perfecting that pre-start. Sailors and students at home, you can complete the Module 3 worksheet from the U.S. Sailing Reach Student Logbook by following the link found in the video description. Thanks for joining us. You can purchase the Reach Module Book with full lessons and the Student Logbook with student worksheets on the U.S. Sailing website. See you guys on the water soon. Ciao, ciao.